Looks like the deep state is getting ready to have a funeral for the U.S. dollar, at least as far as its use as the global reserve currency goes. Stay tuned and I'll tell you more. Welcome, everybody, to Behind the Deep State. I am your host, senior editor of the New American Magazine, Alex Newman. And uh, a lot of major developments last week on the monetary front, folks. And, and this stuff is coming fast and furious now. Uh, we've been warning about it for my entire career as a journalist. And, of course, uh, the New American has been warning about it since before I was born. But uh, here we go, folks. I, I want to just give you a, a roundup of some of these news things. Uh, this is a headline in uh, Fox Business. It says, Brazil and China strike trade deal agreement to ditch U.S. dollar. It says, China overtook the U.S. as Brazil's top trading partner in 2009. And now this week, Brazil and China have just announced a deal that uh, they're going to sideline the U.S. dollar, which, of course, is the global reserve currency right now, and they're going to use their own currencies in trade transactions. Again, this was just announced last week, folks. Uh, they say in the article it's going to enable China and Brazil to carry out trade and financial transactions directly, exchanging yuan for reais or vice versa, rather than first converting their currencies to the U.S. dollar. Okay. Pretty significant, right? The volume of trade between Brazil and China is huge. Uh, that in and of itself wouldn't displace the dollar. But combined with everything else, also last week, Communist China and France conducted their first cross-border yuan settlement of liquidified natural gas trade. So according to the article, uh, China National Offshore Oil Corporation and France's Total Energies have reportedly completed China's first purchase of imported LNG, liquefied natural gas, to be settled in Chinese yuan through the Shanghai Petroleum and Natural Gas Exchange. Folks, this is big. France is supposedly a U.S. ally. They're part of NATO. They're part of the European Union. Uh, and here they are uh, bypassing the U.S. dollar and working directly with the communist Chinese to trade Arab energy in Chinese yuan the Chinese currency. Uh, so this is not just, you know, third world countries run by communist thugs hostile to the United States. This is even close allies of the United States. Emmanuel Macron is, of course, a, a Rothschild minion, uh, you know, total deep state globalist in, in every sense of the term. Um, and and folks, it's really significant that this is a, a an energy deal, too. Uh, we'll do a little bit of uh, more in-depth history, but recognize the reason why the dollar is the global reserve currency. It first started after World War II. Uh, Britain's economy was kind of destroyed after the war. And so the U.S. dollar reigned supreme, but it was backed by gold at the time. So that was natural. Um, you know, and, and you could still trade your foreign currency for gold. And even though, you know, the U.S. government had made gold ownership illegal for Americans, uh, you know, you could still, uh, if you were French, if you were British, you know, if you were a British government or whatever, you could trade your pounds for dollars, get uh, gold out of those dollars. Uh, well, in 1971, Nixon finally closed that last little link to gold that was still in place. And uh, they basically negotiated a deal with some of the major exporting uh, energy exporting countries like Saudi Arabia, really the governments, uh, Saudi Arabia and some others, uh, that they would only sell their energy, their oil supplies in U.S. dollars. And so that basically became the petrodollar, right? The reason then that the dollar maintained its global hegemony was because you couldn't really purchase energy oil on international markets without U.S. dollars. So everybody needed U.S. dollars. Uh, and so that system lasted for, what, 50 years. And now it is rapidly disintegrating before our eyes. Uh, again, we just saw France, a close ally of the United States, trading directly with the CHICOMs with no U.S. dollars involved. Um, Africans are sounding the alarm as well. Uh, this uh, in Kenya, just uh, very recently, the Kenyan president is like, hey, if you're holding dollars, you're going to lose. Right. The market's going to be very different in a few weeks. He said, we're now going to start buying Saudi oil, Saudi energy in our local currency. Listen to this. Uh, challenges of access to dollars. President William Ruto has fired a warning to individuals hoarding dollars amid the currency crisis in the country, terming it as an ethical quick money making scheme. Those of you who are hoarding dollars, you surely might go into losses. <laughs> you better, you better uh, do what you must do because uh, this market is going to be different in a couple of weeks. Through the central bank, we are having conversations to reinstate the interbank exchange uh, market that has since uh, not worked. Speaking during the listing of Laptros Timara rate at the Nairobi Securities Exchange NSC, President William Ruto directed that moving forward, all oil brokers will not hoard dollars as the government will now be making purchases of oil using Kenyan shillings. Market-driven arrangement 
in our fuel sector that will see Kenya access all our fuel uh, needs on a deferred six-month credit. All righty, folks. Uh, even uh, vampire squid former executives of the Goldman Sachs are now calling for this to continue. Uh, and, of course, if you remember the term BRICS, and we exposed this uh, back you know, over 10 years ago, uh, the term BRICS actually came from a Goldman Sachs economist. But the former Goldman Sachs chief economist, Jim O'Neill, is now calling on BRICS governments, as Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, uh, all socialist communist regimes, to, in his words, uh, expand and challenge the dominance of the U.S. dollar. Uh, China's actions with the yuan are already doing just that. And so here's what uh, O'Neill wrote. Um, this is critical, folks. This was published in the uh, Global Policy Journal. He says the U.S. dollar plays a far too dominant role in global finance. Whenever the Federal Reserve Board has embarked on periods of monetary tightening or the opposite, loosening the consequences on the value of the dollar and the knock-on effects have been dramatic. Uh, and so he says, uh, you know, this is good. Uh, the BRICS, these BRICS governments should continue to get rid of the dollar in trade. He says that the dollar's dominance is you know, not good for other people. And so there we go. We should do that. Folks, this is huge, right? Um, even vampire squid employees are openly calling for this. Now, it's already happening, right? Uh, ever since Russia invaded Ukraine uh, and there were sanctions put on it, Russia has stopped also selling its oil in dollars, and they're now selling oil in yuan. Uh, this is the process of de-dollarization, and they're very open about the fact that they want to displace the dollar as the reserve currency and have other currencies, and eventually you'll see even a global currency come into play. And we did a whole episode on the global currency. Uh, just last week, uh, the energy minister of Russia bragged about this. Uh, he's, he's you know celebrating the fact that they actually didn't lose any sales due to these sanctions. They're just selling the oil to uh, friendly countries, he says. We were, and a quote here, uh, I can say today that we have managed to completely redirect the entire volume of exports affected by the embargo. There was no decrease in sales. Now, there are two options here, I guess, to, to look at this. Either Biden and company are total idiots, and they didn't realize this was going to hurt the dollar, this was going to hurt America, this was going to hurt Europe, and it was really going to help Russia and China. Or they're evil, and this is what they wanted. You choose which makes the more sense to you. Uh, and so, folks, uh, they're now kind of announcing this in establishment publications. Uh, the Financial Times, uh, really a, a deep state front group, uh, they just published a column uh, late last week saying, prepare for a multipolar currency world. Uh, here's a, a quote from this article from this uh, piece it says um, it's down to the money during a visit by Xi Jinping to Moscow last week, Vladimir Putin pledged to adopt the renminbi for payments between Russia and countries of Asia, Africa, and Latin America in a bid to displace the dollar. This comes as Moscow is increasingly using the renminbi for its swelling trade with China and embracing it in its central bank reserves to reduce its exposure to toxic American assets. <sighs> Are you seeing where this is going, folks? And we'll talk about the implications of the dollar losing its status as the global reserve currency in a moment. But I want to make you aware, folks. You know, I, I said earlier you could choose whether you thought this was stupidity or deliberate. Uh, I submit to you that this is deliberate and it can be proven. Uh, during the Obama regime, the O'Biden regime, I guess, uh, Obama as fake president, Biden as fake vice president, uh, the um, Treasury Secretary, Timothy TurboTax Geithner, went on record at a Council on Foreign Relations meeting openly saying that the that the Obama administration supported the transition, the expansion of the use of International Monetary Fund SDR, special drawing rights, um, which and, and this was remarkable. OK, the, the uh, governor of the People's Bank of China this is the uh, central bank for this mass murdering dictatorship that was installed into power with help from subversive Americans uh, at the State Department, at the Defense Department, et cetera. Um, he put out this proposal. And the proposal was, we need to move away from the dollar as the global reserve currency. We need to move toward an international reserve currency, preferably run by the IMF. And the SDRs, the special drawing rights, a kind of proto-global currency, would be perfect for the job. And so at the Council on Foreign Relations, and I'm going to show you the video in a minute. At the Council on Foreign Relations, a reporter asks Timothy TurboTax Geithner, the guy who didn't pay his taxes because TurboTax, um, what he thought about this idea. And first, he compliments the central banker of this mass murdering dictatorship. And then he says, we're quite open to that idea. Don't believe me, watch. As I understand this proposal, it's a proposal designed to increase the use of the IMF's special drawing rights. Uh, and uh, we're actually quite open to that suggestion. So there you have it, folks. The highest levels of the Obama administration, and this really what we're dealing with now is just kind of the Obama administration 2.0, right? Obama and his minions and uh, the Council on Foreign Relations, all these clowns are still pulling the strings. Biden is just basically 
reading the teleprompter and eating ice cream when he's capable of doing that. Um, they all openly said they supported the idea of displacing the dollar and moving toward a new international reserve system. So this is underway now. It is accelerating at an incredible rate. Now, it's probably not going to happen tomorrow, right? I mean, your, your dollar is probably not going to be destroyed in value by tomorrow. But if this continues accelerating, you can expect it very, very soon. Plus, with the weakness in the banks, with the collapse, with these two massive uh, banking collapses, some of the biggest in U.S. history, uh, this is very significant. Now, folks, I want to show you that uh, we at The New American, we've been warning about this for a long, long time. Um, uh, actually, my first year out of college, I, I wrote this article, a cover story for The New American, Waking Up to a World Currency, and explained all of this to people, right? And this was like 20, or excuse me, like almost 15 years ago, okay? Uh, 14 years ago. Uh, and so it was called Waking Up to a World Currency, cover story in The New American. It had a companion article, The Emerging Global Fed, where I explained that they want to turn the International Monetary Fund into a global central bank. They want to use the IMF SDR as the global reserve once they move the dollar out of the way. Uh, in 2013, I uh, did another article uh, with dollar demise in focus, Beijing pushes new world order. And here's what I said. Uh, prominent American and British outlets have even been publishing pieces openly discussing the possible end of the dollar's reign in recent days. The sun is setting on dollar supremacy and with it American power. That was an October 14th headline in the UK Telegraph, one of Britain's most influential papers. Uh, in the New York Slimes, they uh, ran a piece uh, back then that said, at risk, currency privilege of the US dollar. Another New York Times article published on October 16th uh, in the Economic Times uh, warned that the dollar's role as the world's leading reserve currency may be at risk. CNBC had an article, Default Fears Put Dollar's Reserve Status at Risk. Chinese were openly celebrating this. Uh, Xinhua, the um, uh, communist Chinese espionage and propaganda service, here's what they said. Um, what may also be included as a key part of an effective reform is the introduction of a new international reserve currency that is to be created to replace the dominant U.S. dollar so that the international community could permanently stay away from the spillover of the intensifying domestic political turmoil in the United States. So also in 2013, I wrote an article. Uh, here's the headline. Uh, BRICS regimes forge new world bank and call for global currency. Uh, and in that article, I warned, and I'm quoting here, uh, the governments and dictatorships ruling over the so-called BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, agreed to set up a new world bank that analysts say could further marginalize the increasingly unstable U.S. dollar, possibly helping to eventually dethrone it as the global reserve currency. Now, this is a decade ago, folks. Uh, meeting in Durban, South Africa last week at their fifth annual summit, the socialist and communist-minded BRICS regimes also announced their support for creating a new world currency and full-fledged global governance. And all this was outlined in an actual document, in an actual agreement called the Etiquini Declaration. So this was on paper. You know, the fake media in America probably didn't tell you much about it. But, of course, we at the New American did. And, um, and folks, this is all happening in tandem with the destruction of our diplomacy, right? Um, it's happening on purpose. Now, if, if you look at what's going on on the diplomatic front, uh, the Biden regime is running around the world, uh, you know, threatening governments that if they don't promote sodomy and, um, you know, if they don't uh, accept the chopping off of body parts from children under the guise of transgenderism and, uh, you know, so-called homosexual marriage, all these things, uh, then we're going to stop borrowing money from China and giving it to them as bribe money. I mean, foreign aid money. Um, and, you know, they, the, these African governments, these Latin American governments, these Asian governments look at this and say, you know, what kind of freak show is this? This is ridiculous. Right. Meanwhile, the, the communist Chinese are coming in and they're offering, uh, you know, investment. They're offering bribe money. They're offering technology that they stole from us with help from uh, traders in, uh, in the United States uh, with no strings attached. Right. Just sign on the dotted line and you don't, you don't have to chop off um, generals from children and you don't have to you know, we don't care about what your marriage policies are. Just, you know, go into debt to us. Uh, and so what's happening, folks? We're watching here the controlled demolition of the old world order and the shifting over to the new world order. Uh, another article we did in 2015, uh, we, we should, everybody should have seen this coming, was called uh, China Staking Claim in the New World Order. And we actually warned that the globalists, the deep state, were preparing to shift the center of power away from the United States, which they had abused, raped, uh, and, and um, basically dismantled after harnessing our economic and our military power for generations, uh, and that they were in the process of shifting all that over to communist China. Well, now it's coming to fruition. Now the chickens are coming home to roost. Uh, and the implications of this, folks, are, are hard to overstate, right? Um, with the dollar serving as the global reserve currency, 
there's a, a structural demand built in for dollars, right? All over the world, constantly, there's a demand for U.S. dollars because people need it to pay their debt. People need it to settle up international transactions and exchanges. But well, what happens when that evaporates because everybody's doing trade in yuan or, or you know, rubles or, uh, or hayes or whatever currency it is or even IMF uh, special drawing rights? Uh, what, what happens is the value of the dollar will absolutely plummet. Now, we don't make a whole lot of stuff in the United States anymore, right? We, we import our stuff from, from China, from Mexico. Uh, so we have been able to buy it because we have the dollar. The dollar is valuable because everybody wants some because that's what they use for international trade. So what's going to happen here as the dollar is displaced as a global reserve currency? Well, to start with, your dollars are going to be worth a whole lot less in terms of purchasing power. You are not going to be able to buy nearly as much cheap Chinese junk at Walmart as you could when the dollar was a global reserve currency. Um, and folks, the dominoes are falling now, right? Uh, what we're watching here is the restructuring of the world, as George Soros told um, the Financial Times over a decade ago. To bring China into the creation of a new uh, 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 world order. So there you go, folks. That is what is happening right now. We're watching this process play out. Um, and again, I, I don't know that it's going to come tomorrow. I don't know that these dominoes are all going to fall by the end of next week. But we're watching that process happen. We're watching it accelerate. Uh, and the implications are absolutely huge. They're absolutely enormous. And the Biden administration is helping out. We're watching right now a total global war being waged against the American people. And the worst part is that the enemies of the American people have actually, I believe, through shenanigans in the electoral process, they've even captured the national government, the federal government. So it's hard to overstate this. Uh, I think it would be wise to make some preparations and, um, you know, consider the possibility. What happens if the U.S. dollar loses its status as the global reserve currency? Are your investments or your savings positioned in a way that will at least help you preserve some of that. Now, they're going to loot you anyway, right? If you buy gold and uh, the dollar loses half of its value, so suddenly your $2,000 ounce of gold is now worth $4,000, uh, the, the increasingly unhinged regime in Washington, D.C. is going to say, oh, that's 100% capital gains, fork it over, right? And they're going to demand capital gains taxes on your stocks, on your bonds, on, on your uh, foreign currencies, on your gold and silver, on your real estate, whatever it is. So they're going to loot you no matter what. I mean, just you, you got to get comfortable with that fact. But um, even beyond that, folks, we need to have a serious discussion here about currency, about honest money, about getting rid of the Federal Reserve System. Uh, and we saw during Donald Trump's administration, right, it, it was kind of like a big pause button put on this controlled demolition of our country. Uh, in just a matter of a few years, it completely turned the ship around, right? Suddenly we were energy independent. In fact, we were exporting energy. Uh, suddenly the full might of the U.S. government wasn't turned toward destroying the U.S. economy. It was kind of letting the foot off of the neck so that the U.S. economy could revive. And it happened very quickly. I mean, very, very quickly. We saw this turned around. Uh, and it's possible to do that, do that again. Uh, if the uh, fifth column in the United States would quit subsidizing communist Chinese uh, corruption and, and central planning and fascism, uh, that system would implode very rapidly, even with all the technology they've already stolen, right? Um, they don't know how to use it properly. They don't know how to fix it properly. Uh, if we would just cut off the subsidies, as Donald Trump did, if we would just stop the insanity, if we would just stop the crazy climate policies that are shutting down our energy infrastructure, shutting down our energy exploration, we could turn a lot of this around on a dime. If we would go back to a sound money system, all this would become a moot point. It wouldn't matter if we're a reserve currency or what. We'd have a solid, sound currency on which we could build a real economy. But um, as as it's unfolding now, folks, we are in for a world of pain. It's being planned by the deep state. You need to expose them. You need to prepare yourselves and your family, and you need to get involved in the process so that we can put a stop to this. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex Newman. This is Behind the Deep State from the New American Magazine. Until next time, God bless you all. Hi, I'm Alan Keyes. I'm the host of IMTV's uh, daily talk show about uh, news and events in America. And I want to say a good word for the New American Magazine. Uh, not only because Alex Newman has joined us as somebody who is periodically hosting a show, but because uh, New American Magazine represents a alternative media that is willing to tell people the truth. Uh, with so much fake news spreading, spreading about and the fact that right now this country is in an existential crisis, we remember who we are and where we come from and what our principles are or we die. Reading New American Magazine can keep you up to the minute on the issues that are challenging us as a people and on which that survival hangs. 
You can check it out and subscribe at www.thenewamerican.com.